Hello, and welcome to this film about polarity, or uneven distribution of charge. That's what this is all about um, when we're talking about polarity in chemistry. Um, hopefully you've just watched the introduction to uh, intermolecular forces, and you've um, jogged your memory of what intermolecular forces are, and you know the names of the three main types of intermolecular force. This film deals with um, the fact that if you've got atoms that are bonded together that have different electronegativities, the bond between those atoms will be polar, or in other words, the charge will be unevenly distributed in that bond. And once you've identified any bonds that are polar, you can start thinking about whether the molecule that those bonds in will also be polar. So in other words, whether the molecule, uh, whether the, whether the molecule will have polarity. Okay. And also, finally, um, you'll look at how the symmetry of a molecule can affect whether it's polar or not, regardless of whether it's got polar bonds. Now, that might sound all a little bit confusing at the moment, but hopefully it will start making a bit more sense as we start having a look at some real examples of this. Okay, well, when we're thinking about what polarity is, I think the first question we need to ask ourselves is where the electrons in a bond are. Are they slap bang in the middle of a covalent bond, or are they more towards one atom or the other? Now, this is a diagram of boron trifluoride. Okay, so here are the fluorine atoms on the outside, and boron in the middle. Now, we should know by now that fluorine is an extremely electronegative element. Okay, that is to say, it pulls the electrons in a bond towards itself a great deal. That means if we've got if we look at any one of the boron fluorine bonds, the electron pair won't be in the middle, but it will be a long way over towards the fluorine and away from the boron. And this will make the fluorine more negative and the boron boron, not the borine, the boron more positive. And this bond is now polar. It's got a negative end, slightly negative end, and a slightly positive end. So by having these electrons unevenly distributed between these two atoms, we're going to create a polar bond. And that will happen because the electronegativity of any two different atoms will be different. So as long as two atoms are different from one another, we can say that the electrons won't be exactly halfway between them, and there will be some polarity. Obviously, the bigger the electronegativity difference, the more polarity there will be. Here's another way of showing a polar bond and this time instead of having just the electrons shown as a line this is attempting to show that there's a lot more electrons in the bond over towards the fluorine than there are towards the hydrogen because fluorine has a much higher electronegativity than hydrogen and so this end of the molecule in this case the bond and the molecule because there's just two atoms becomes slightly negative and this end becomes slightly positive this molecule although it has polar bonds, as we'll see in a minute, will not be a polar molecule. This is a polar molecule, this one isn't, and we'll see why in just a moment. Okay, so, working our way through a few examples here, okay, we're starting with CH4, and we're gradually replacing each of the hydrogens with chlorine atoms. Chlorine's quite close to fluorine in the periodic table, so it's quite an electronegative element. Carbon and hydrogen have fairly similar electronegativity differences, and we can see from this diagram from the fact that there's a partial negative charge, sorry, they have fairly, not fairly similar electronegativity differences, but fairly similar electronegativities. Carbon is actually slightly more electronegative than hydrogen, which is why it's slightly negative over here, and each one of these bonds will have electrons slightly more towards carbon than towards hydrogen. However, every one of these bonds, or the polarity of every one of these bonds, will cancel out because of the symmetry of the molecule. So although this is slightly positive, and this is slightly positive, and this is slightly positive, and this is slightly positive, on the whole, this molecule doesn't have a slightly positive end to it. Okay, because the bond dipoles are cancelling one another out because of the symmetry. As soon as I add a chlorine instead of one of the hydrogens, and this bond becomes more negative at the chlorine end and more positive at the carbon end, these bonds don't cancel one another out anymore. And as we can see from this diagram here, 
there's a slightly negative end to the molecule and a slightly positive end. So this molecule is polar on account of the fact that the polar bonds within it aren't cancelling one another out. Swap another chlorine, and now this end of the molecule, this entire side of it, I suppose you could say, has become the negative side, and this side is the more positive side. Put another chlorine in, and this whole side with the three chlorines on, so kind of towards us here, will be the most negative end or side of the molecule. So the molecule again is polar because the polar bonds aren't cancelling one another out. Finally, swap the last chlorine and now all the chlorines are the more negative ends of the bonds. So this molecule still has polar bonds just like all these other molecules did but they are once again, because of the symmetry of the molecule, cancelling one another out. Okay, so this molecule is not polar. All these three are, because they're not so symmetrical as these two on the ends. All the molecules have polar bonds within them, even though these ones are often classed as being non-polar, because there's a very small electronegativity difference between those two atoms. Okay, they've all got polar bonds, but only the symmetrical ones are non-polar overall. Let's have a look at a few different shapes of molecules to see if we can make this point a little bit clearer. Okay, um, we'll look at a linear molecule. We'll look at um, a tetrahedral one in the middle. So here's a linear, here's a trigonal pyramidal. Hopefully you remember these shapes from the previous series of films about molecular shapes. Here's another tetrahedral. And here's what's called a trigonal planar. Okay, now in a linear molecule, if you've got two different atoms, the bond will always be polar. There's no other bonds to cancel out the polarity, so this molecule will be polar. If, for example, I've got a carbon dioxide molecule, which is also linear and has a much more electronegative atom attached to the carbon, these bonds are very polar, but this polar bond is cancelling out that polar bond because of the symmetry of the molecule. So linear molecules can be polar or nonpolar depending on their symmetry. If we look at a trigonal pyramidal, if we've got different atoms bonded together, the bonds will be polar. And this molecule can't fail to be polar. It's got to be polar if the bonds are polar because there isn't this symmetry here. Okay, if it was flat like this molecule, then the bonds would cancel one another out. Okay, but in this case here, where you've got the slightly negative atom, this sticks out above the bonds, and so this top of the molecule is more negative than the bottom. Here, although in this case the central atom is slightly positive, because it's in the same plane as all the fluorines, all these polar bonds cancel out. And so a trigonal planar molecule with three identical atoms around the outside will always be nonpolar. If, for example, I took a trigonal planar molecule that had different atoms around the outside, so this is called methanol, um, but it doesn't matter about the name so much at the moment. It's trigonal planar because we've got three sets of bonding pairs around the central atom, but different atoms around the outside, so these polar bonds won't cancel out and this molecule will be polar. Okay? So trigonal planar depends on what atoms you've got in the molecule. If it's symmetrical, again, notice, symmetry is leading to non-polarity. Asymmetry is leading to a polar molecule. Okay? Carbon dioxide, non-polar. Hydrogen chloride, polar, because of the symmetry again. Here's two tetrahedral molecules, rather like the ones we've just seen on the previous slide. As long as the molecule is symmetrical, it will be non-polar. As soon as we take away the symmetry, the molecule becomes polar again. Okay, so polar bonds are bonds in which there is an uneven distribution of charge. This will happen any time you have two different atoms bonded together, but bonds will be more polar if there's big electronegativity differences between the two atoms. Put polar bonds in a molecule and we will have a polar molecule so long as the molecule isn't symmetrical have a symmetrical molecule and all the polar bonds cancel one another out and you have a non-polar molecule overall.